Hi and welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today I'm taking you through True Bearings and this is part of our Pythagoras' Theorem and Trigonometry series and this is the eighth video aimed at students in grades 9 to 12. So in this video it is jam-packed. Um, I would hope that you would stay with us right to the end because we're going to cover what a true bearing is, how to find a true bearing, we're going to convert between compass bearings and true bearings, we're going to look at reverse bearings and a similar simple familiar worded problem and then we'll talk very quickly about what's coming up next so let's get right into it we've got so much to cover what is a true bearing well we've looked in our previous video at compass bearings and if you would remember they were also used for navigation and true bearings are also used in navigation and we always measure these clockwise from north if you would remember in our previous video on compass bearings we talked about measuring from north or south but this time it's only from north and we give our true bearing as a three digit number with units of measurement being degrees true so if you leave it as just degrees it could describe an ordinary angle or a compass bearing but we put the t at the end to recognize that it's a true bearing so for example, if you had an object that was at a bearing of 70 degrees true from you, it means that when you face north, the angle between you and that object in a clockwise direction, so you're to go all the way around the clock, is 70 degrees. That's this angle in here. So we're looking from north and then we move out to the object. Okay, a true bearing has a range of 0 through to 360 degrees true. Now, if you think of a full revolution of a circle, that means that 0 degrees true and 360 degrees true are the same bearing. Everything else is in between those values. So that means you'll never get a negative bearing and you'll never get a bearing greater than 360 degrees true. Okay, we're going to start with our first worked example. And one of the key things here is reading the language carefully. We're always thinking about a position where we are. So we're reading from that position and looking out to another position. So you'll see a lot of these kind of diagrams in exams and textbooks. So we've got our compass. We're looking from above here and we've got our compass. North is facing in a upwards direction, which means we're looking forwards north. And then we've got this point A. And point A is where we're looking out to. We are standing at O, the origin, and we're looking from the origin out to A. So it's really important to imagine yourself standing at the point where you're looking from and you're looking out to the other place. Now remember that our bearings are always measured from north when we're looking at true bearings. So we start facing north and then we're measuring that angle all the way out to where A is. Now to solve this problem, we're trying to find that angle that's um, unknown between that north line and A. So we've actually been given a figure um, that's 35 degrees, it's outside of that range. So what we need to remember is that between north and east is a right angle. And so our actual true bearing is going to be the difference between 90 degrees and 35 degrees, which is 55 degrees true. Okay, our next one, we're going to do a different position on the compass. We're looking from O again out to point B. So this time we've got 17 degrees. Once again, that's not inside our bearing. If our bearing, if we look north, we go round through east and then around to point B. And 17 degrees sits outside the bearing. So we need to work out the angle inside the bearing. Once again, we know we've got a measure from north. And we know that north-south is a straight line. So you can see in orange, I've drawn a little arrow. That is the bearing. That's what we need to measure. But we know some information from north to south is 180 degrees. So what we can do is actually a subtraction here. We can work 180 degrees, take the 17 degrees away, and that will give us the true bearing, which is 163 degrees true. We're going to have another worked example here looking at a bearing of C once again from point O, so that origin point. And this time we're going to look at it quadrant by quadrant clockwise. So there's different ways you can approach bearings to get the right answer. So firstly, from north to east, we've got this 90 degree angle in here. And then from east to south, another 90 degrees. And then our last part is that part on to C, which is 11 degrees. So to find our true bearing, we can add 90 plus 90 plus 11, and we get 191 degrees true. Also, if you recognize that north all the way to south is a straight line, you could have started with just 180 and added 11 on. So we can use addition or subtraction to work out bearings. You just need to really make sure that you solidify and concrete that in your mind. You start at north, you work around to a clockwise direction to the line where you're finding your point and that is the angle you're looking for not an angle on the other side 
Okay, we're now going to do a quick question where we're going to convert between a compass bearing and a true bearing. So I'm given a compass bearing of south 42 degrees east and I need to find the true bearing. And the best way to draw this is to draw a picture and then I can get an idea of what my true bearing is. So we're actually going to draw that, that compass just like we had in our previous questions. And so I'm always starting at the origin looking north, but this time I've got a compass bearing. Now south 42 degrees east means I started south and I I move 42 degrees towards the east and that means I've got this little angle in here that I can now label as 42 degrees. Now if you remember your compass bearing starts at north so what I need to do is I need to think about north and move clockwise around till I hit that brown dotted line and measure that angle from there. So I know that north to east is going to be a right angle first and then this little space in here is going to be 90 degrees from south to east 90 degrees from the north to east plus the difference between 90 and 42 will give me 138 degrees. Now so far all of our bearings that we've been looking at have been looking at this from this origin point where the compass points cross and we've been looking out to another point. In this case we're looking out to D. But what if we were at point D and we had to look backwards to O? A lot of students would automatically think well the bearing's going to be the same. Let's look at a demonstration and see that it is not. As you can see, I have two points, A and B, and they are both facing north. Point A is going to point to B, so you can see he's passed through quite a small angle. Point B is going to be pointing to point A. You can see he passes through 90, 180, 270 degrees to point to A. So their angles are quite different. So something really important to remember, and this is one of the things you need to memorize, is that the difference between a forward bearing and its reverse bearing, also known as a backward bearing or a back bearing, they're always going to be different by 180 degrees. I'm going to prove that to you in a moment. So if a forward bearing was two degrees, then its reverse bearing is going to be plus or minus 180 degrees. Now if I take two degrees as my forward bearing, two degrees true, and I took 180 degrees away, that would give me a negative number. And remember, I can't have negative bearings. So in that case, I'm gonna add 180 degrees. And in the opposite situation, if I had a forward bearing of 200 degrees, which means I've gone all the way around past the south line and a little bit further on, 200 degrees true is my forward bearing. Well, if I add 180 degrees, I'm going to end up with more than 360 degrees, which I cannot do. So that means I have to subtract. So you just need to remember a forward bearing is plus or minus 180. And it's whatever gives you the logical answer that's in a range of 0 to 360 and is a positive number. Let's prove it for ourselves. We're going to demonstrate that the bearing of D from O is different from O from D by 180 degrees. So let's firstly put our point D on the map and we've got 45 degrees here in the middle. So firstly, we're gonna to have to find our bearing of D from O in the middle. Okay, so that's this angle here shown in orange. So we know that it's gonna be north to east, 90 degrees plus 45 degrees. So the bearing of D standing at O, looking out in that direction is gonna be 135 degrees. Okay, so now I need to find the reverse bearing from D back to O. So the best way to do this is to add another north line at the point of D, because we really need to measure the angle where we are at D. Okay, so I've got my new north line. Now, this is the angle shown in orange that I'm looking backwards from D to O that I need to actually find this angle now. You can see that it is quite a different angle when I'm standing at O looking out at D than when I'm at D looking back at O. Okay, so firstly, to find this angle, I'm gonna use, we can use lots of different rules that we've learned in junior school. We can use things like sum of angles in a triangle. We can use parallel lines and alternate angles. Today, I'm gonna to focus on sum of angles in a triangle. So here's my triangle right here, and I know it's a right angle triangle. So south to west forms that right angle. So I'm gonna pop that in. Okay, so looking back, um, I want that angle that's on the outside of that triangle. To get that angle, I need to find the remaining angle inside the triangle first. So that's 45 degrees, thinking of sum of angles in a triangle. 90 plus 45 gives me 135, and the difference of that from 180 is another 45 degree angle. Okay, so now I've found that angle inside the triangle. How do I still get that angle outside the triangle? Well, remember, 
a revolution is 360 degrees. So I've almost got a full circle here and the full circle will be 360. So if I want to find the angle outside, I'm going to take away the 45 degrees and that will give me that reverse bearing of 315 degrees true. Now remember, that forward bearing was 135, the reverse bearing is 315, the difference between the two is 180 degrees. So we've just proved that the difference between two bearings is always going to be 180 degrees. Okay, let's now do a shortcut using reverse bearings. So I've got to find my bearing from E back to O, and I know the forward bearing is O. Now I could do what I did in the previous question and create another north line and create a triangle and then create a revolution. It's a lot of a waste of time when I know that the difference is going to be 180 degrees. So I can take a shortcut without doing all of that geometry and just jump straight to the difference. Okay, so the quickest way is I'm going to either add 180 or subtract 180 degrees. Now you might think, well, which one do I do? Try either. Your answer has to be logical. If I add 180 degrees, well, the forward bearing was 20 degrees. So if I add that, then I am going to um, end up with 200 degrees. But if I take 180 degrees away from 20, I'm going to get a negative number, which is not possible for bearings. So I know that I've got to add the two. So I'm going to end up with 200 degrees true. You might want to pause here and just think about that one for a moment. Okay, now I'm going to bring in a very simple, familiar worked example. We're going to do some more complex ones that bring everything together from all our videos later. But today we're just going to focus on this simple familiar worked example. So we've got this man, he's hiking from base camp to a shed that's 20 kilometers away on a bearing of 125 degrees true. So how far south is he from his base camp? All right, best thing to do is to draw a picture first. I draw my compass and I'm going to put base camp in at the origin. It's always a good place to when your starting point will be from the origin. And we know this shed is 20 kilometers away and we know the bearing is 125 degrees true. So let's plug that bearing in there. We know that north to east is 90 degrees and then 90 plus 35 gives us 125. So we know that that little angle sitting in there from the east line down to the shed is going to be 35 degrees. And we've got our 20 degrees on the, uh, 20 kilometers on there, which is our distance from base camp to the shed. Okay, so now I'm going to put a parallel line in here, parallel to the east-west line, and it makes a right angle triangle. What I'm trying to find is how far south he is now. Now, we know he's traveled in a south-easterly um, direction away from base camp. It's 125 degrees true. So he's not going to be due south, which means exactly south. No, he's in that direction out here. But what we do know is that part of that is made up of a southerly direction and part is made up of an easterly direction. So we're going to work out just how far south he is from the starting point. We're going to call that X. Okay, so using some trigonometry. Now you'll notice that I've chucked an angle into the triangle. You might think, well, where did the 55 degrees come from? Well, 55 plus 35 makes a right angle. We know east to south is a right angle. So we can put an angle inside the triangle, which will enable us to form a trigonometric ratio. Okay, so now I've got this 55 degrees and I've got this x value. So x value, I look from x and I go, what information do I have? Well, I have um, got, actually from my 55 degree angle, I've got an adjacent and I've got a hypotenuse. So I need to use the cosine formula. And of course, I've written the wrong thing on here.
So now that I've got the cosine formula, I need to substitute into the formula. So I've got cos 55 equals x over 20. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by 20. And then I end up with x equals 20 cos 55. When I substitute that into the calculator, I get 11.5. But I do need to write a statement and use units of measurement. So the mean is 11.5 kilometers from the base camp in a southerly direction. We know he's 20 kilometers in a southeasterly direction, but that's made up of 11.5 kilometers south. You might also be asked how far east he is, and you'd be using similar principles to work that out. You could actually use Pythagoras' theorem now that you've got two sides of the triangle, or trigonometry to work out the remaining side. Well, let's have a quick look at what is coming up. I do have a surprise for you for our next video. It's something for our teachers, a useful little brain break to do with your class on True Bearings. Stay tuned for that one. And I've got non-right angle triangles. We're gonna bring some different information together on using trigonometry. We've got some complex problems that combine it all together. And then we'll move on to some of our senior advanced mathematics looking at unit, circle, and trig functions. And I'd like to welcome you back if you're one of our ongoing subscribers we've got a lot of new subscribers this month so hello to you all thank you so much for being a part of the McClatchy Maths family and I would also like to ask if you found this helpful tell somebody you could tell a friend you could tell a teacher you could share it on social media you could even join us on Facebook and Instagram or tell us in the comments what you thought and if you've got any questions about using true bearings after watching this video, you could email us at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. You could send me a message on Facebook or Insta, or you could even ask the question in the comments. Probably not the best way to go and get a detailed answer. Email's probably better for you to actually elaborate and me to elaborate back. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I hope this really helped you and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a wonderful day.